and hello everybody we are officially recording which means we are starting our session for the day and um i am jeanette bruce i you you probably know me if you've been here before i'm the program coordinator at whistler public library and of course um i would like to start our event by expressing my gratitude that we are able to gather today on the shared traditional unceded territories of the Squamish and the Lilwat nations. We are so lucky to live, work, and play on these territories. And um, if you're interested in engaging more with the nations, the local nations, um, I highly recommend joining us. We are um, hosting a monthly series called Breaking Bannock, where I talk to different members of the Squamish Lilwat Cultural mm -hmm. Center's team. Um, and the next session is on May 13th, and I will be talking to Maggie Wallace, and she is the head cook of the Thunderbird Cafe. So we're going to be talking about how Maggie came to work at the SLCC. She was also a, an, an Indigenous Youth Ambassador before she started her position. So we're going to talk about her journey, and it's going to be awesome. So that's May 13th, and you can email me if you want to attend. And um, just a little tiny bit of housekeeping, um, which again, if you've been here before, you'll know the drill. Um, we're in a webinar format right now, which means that we can't see or hear the audience, but you can still interact with us using either the chat or the Q&A. Um, just in case you're wondering, the Q&A is not anonymous, so your name will always be <laughs> with your with your question. If for some reason you want me to ask your question anonymously, you can send me a private message through the chat and I will not read out your name. But we're talking about the library. We hope, it, we hope you don't need to be anonymous today. Um, and of course, before I, um, before I introduce our guest, I do want to say thank you so much to Mac, um, Whistler's Mature Action Community. Um, thank you to Kathy and to Sherilyn for continuing to partner with us on this um, series. It's been such a pleasure to um, meet with everybody every month and um, cover such a variety of topics. That's been very cool. And so thank you to Mac for partnering with us on this. Um, and after our presentation today, I believe Kathy can tell us about the May presentation, which is going to be a good one. And um, yeah, so we'll we'll hear a little bit about what's coming up. And of course, um, we are recording today. So we will share the link with the um, attendance list. So if you if you're watching in the future, Hi, <laughs> thanks for being here in the future. <laughs> Um, and that is all of my housekeeping. So I am going to um, pass things over to Nadine White. So if you're here today, you know that we are talking about getting the most out of your library. And so for that presentation, you'll be hearing from our public services librarian, Nadine White, and from me. Um, but Nadine is going to kick us off. So Nadine, take it away. All right. Well, I'm very excited to talk about the library and especially to explain how to get the most out of the services we're offering because they do look a little bit different during the pandemic. But one place that I would like to start is just to describe the library as choose your own adventure. It's what I love the most about the library. It's a personalized experience. So I would invite the panelists and any of the participation or participants to jump in when I've missed something because what's special about the library for one person is different. Um, and so right now, it's good to know that we're back up to being open six days a week. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday is 10 to 5. And then on Thursdays, oh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's uh, noon to 7, because we wanted to offer some evening hours to the community. You're able to come in for a 30-minute browsing and borrowing session. And within that visit, like we want to remind people that our staff love to talk about books. We really miss um, connecting with the community about what they're reading and how they're spending their time at home. We've also brought back interlibrary loans. So if we don't have something on our shelf that you want, never be shy to tell us because we can borrow it from other libraries. And we do build our collection based on recommendations from the community. So the best way to go about that is if you're searching and you get a, no results in the catalog, there's a link directly to the request an item form, but you can also find, find it under browse. And there's the lovely Jeanette 
you can't go far around the library without seeing Jeanette. Nadine, sorry to interrupt, but your screen is not moving with you. It didn't switch oh. over to browse. What do you suggest, Jeanette? Maybe just Please. unshare for a minute and, and reshare. That's, okay. that's always my expert advice. <laughs> and now, how about now? Do you see Jeanette? Ah, there I am. <laughs> there she is. Let's see if it, it moves as I navigate. So I'm just um, going to the browse menu and choosing request an item. Did it move with me? Perfect. Okay. So you just fill in this form and it goes to the staff at the front desk and they look to see if they can borrow it from another library or they pass it on to me or Kaylee, who's the youth services librarian for consideration for our collection. So the community can be very proud that we built the library's collection together. And when we do have visitors from out of town, they often comment on what a strong collection we have um, for, for the size of our community. Now, the other thing that I've noticed during the pandemic is we have loads and loads and loads of new books in our display. And we would just love to see that display to be cleared, empty, empty stands at the library in a book display give us happiness. So come on by and there is so much being published right now. Um, there was a bit of a delay in books getting to the library at the start of the pandemic, but that's not really the case right now. So you've got lots of great reading um, choices. We are also continuing to add new things, new and exciting things to the collection. And of those, the ukuleles um, are the best example. And so recently we added 10 ukuleles. They immediately checked out. I think we made an announcement on a Friday and they were all gone by the Monday. Uh, we're also working on creating an indigenous collection. So our first step is we went through and we pulled out any books that were on this topic and we're going to shelve them together. So we can really showcase what the library has to offer. Um, we also um, bought everything that the Squamish Little Lit Cultural Center has in their gift shop. And so that collection is strong and growing. And then another exciting thing is we're partnering with AWARE to launch our very first seed library. And it's essentially just gonna be a Tupperware box that you can come in, you go to the gardening section and all the seeds will be filed alphabetically you're welcome to take seeds or deposit seeds. Um, there'll just be a few requirements that we wanna stick to organic, no bear attractants, and that the seeds need to be from the last three years. And you won't even need a library card to be able to use that. So that's coming soon um, before the end of the month, hopefully. And the other thing that you can do in the building is we do have our pop-up computer lab available. So we've moved four stations into our community room and you're able to come in if you don't have your own device at home or you need access to the internet for 60 minutes. And our staff is available to help people. Um, so if you do need a little bit of tech help, maybe you're trying to get your taxes done, do a visa application, um, they can help you to navigate how to use the computer. We're also doing photocopying, scanning, and printing. Um, that's really a bulk of what we see visitors coming into the library for. We have free Wi-Fi in the building, obviously, but we've extended that out beyond our building. Um, so if you want to come and visit the park or the plaza out front, you can hang out there on the Wi-Fi. And we're hoping this summer that we can really animate those spaces and provide more seating especially if the restrictions continue and it's not safe to stay in the library for extended periods of time. So that would be our focus this summer. Um, and then there is book a librarian. So if someone does have a technical question that they can't get help with from the front desk, because the front desk is also a very good resource, you can call or email or visit in person and any staff member can help with a basic question. If it becomes too complicated, they'll recommend that you book an appointment directly with me. And we have, through the pandemic, been doing that over Zoom. But I did do my very first pilot in-person book a librarian. We have a mobile barrier to keep us safe. 
Um, and so I might be doing more of that as the restrictions lift or as there's a need. So never be shy to tell us what you need here at the library. We'll, we'll try to do our best to, to find a solution. So that's in the library. Jeanette, can you think of anything else in terms of in the library services right now? That's that's all that comes to to my mind. Just mm -hmm. just knowing that um, our staff really do love to see people in person. It's like a, it's a real treat these days to see familiar faces. So if you haven't been in to visit yet, please do. <laughs> and we are a bunch of people who love unusual questions. So don't be shy. Um, even if you think it's outside of our wheelhouse, we might know where to refer you to. Um, I think along with the library is choose your own adventure uh, story. I think it's also whatever the community wants it to be. So you just have to communicate your need and then we'll figure out how to address it. Um, now, the library was really well positioned prior to the pandemic because essentially our website is like a virtual second branch. And we have tried to make sure that whatever we have in print, there's a complement online. And the online collection has been taking off in the last decade um, to the point that, you know, we had quite a bit to offer there. But starting at the beginning of the pandemic, we steered all of our funds towards buying electronic resources versus print because one, we couldn't even get those deliveries to the library. Um, so we've really expanded the eBooks and downloadable audiobooks that we have through Overdrive. And we've been tracking um, wait times so that we can buy Whistler only copies to reduce the waits for our local patrons. Um, and then the other big news that we did during the pandemic was that you can just call us or email us if you don't have a library card. And we will sign you up with the information that you provide us. It will be in a temporary account that will work immediately online for the online resources for six months. And then after six months, we do ask that you pop in with your photo ID and something with your mailing address to make it into a official, like permanent account. Um, and with that online uh, collection, the formats that we have, so we have ebooks, we have downloadable audiobooks, magazines, newspapers, music, films. We have courses to learn languages, learn skills. We have a new resource where you can learn crafts and um, painting and things like that. And then we have more traditional databases. Um, so do you need access to the building code? Are you looking for grants you can apply to because you volunteer at a nonprofit? And I think those are the um, resources that sort of get underutilized. Those are the hidden gems. Um, do you have someone in your life who loves to tinker with their car? We have the auto repair manuals, the Chilton manuals that you would get from a technical institute. Um, we also have consumer reports. Are you making big purchases and you're not sure like what is the best washing machine out there, we can help with that. And last up, a, a real hidden gem that we wanna talk about because their funding was cut and locally with community support, the federal government has brought the money back is NELS. It's the National Network of Equitable Library Services. So this is an organization that allows people to borrow um, accessible formats for text and audio that are not locked by um, publishers, like if you borrowed it from Overdrive. So it makes it easier for you to borrow this material. And it also is more compatible with more devices. And all you have to do is tell our staff that you have a print disability. They update your account and immediately on the NELS website, when you sign in with your library card and your PIN number, you just get immediate access. Um, we recently had some students who are participating in the Reading Link Challenge, which is like a book quiz, quiz off, like Jeanette's involved this morning, I think you had a session. And um, there are about a dozen students in the Sea to Sky Corridor that have print disabilities. And so they're accessing the books through NELS. And essentially all they did was they probably, um, when we did our testing, 
there, there you have some sort of software already on your computer. And Nels is so good that it just immediately takes the um, book into that software or you're reading in your web browser. So I know a lot of people with the library's online resources, they can be tricky. There are steps, they have to learn, you have to download apps, but that's where Nels really shines is that they make that a very smooth experience for their users. And we're just really grateful that the funding was put back. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's my big, um, you know, what the library is offering currently. Um, and we could take some time to navigate around the website if you're interested, or maybe this is a good opportunity. Jeanette, is this where you would like to jump in and talk about programs? Sure, I could. I also um, would like to remind everybody who's in the audience, because some people came in a few minutes late, that you are welcome to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And Nadine and I are happy to take them at any time um, during our during our session, especially if it's about something specific that one of us has said. Um, so if you are, um, if you do have any questions about anything that Nadine has just shared with us, please feel free to um, leave a comment in the chat. Um, or you can use the Q&A function as well, um, whatever your preference, and I'll keep an eye on that and we can make sure that we that we get your questions as they come in. Um, but Nadine, if you want to do a little bit of navigating, you can do that sure. first and then I'll take over. Okay, awesome. And so a little bit of a tour of the library is Browse is mostly about the physical collection. Um, so new titles is everything that we've recently bought and you can go in and take a look. So this would be, if you were physically in the library, you go to the new item display, you have the same experience here online. Um, under Browse, there's also lists of awards, bestsellers, um, lists that the staff have created, but this is the one where you want to do your request an item where when we don't own something. But if you're stuck and you don't know what you wanna read, we have a new form called We Recommend you tell us a little bit about what you love, maybe what you don't like to read, and we'll provide you with a list of three to five recommendations that are personalized. Um, the next two tabs are all about the online resources. So you have download, and that's the, the books, the audiobooks, magazines, newspapers, music, and films. And within that, um, what I should have mentioned earlier is there has been a big change within um, library collections for ebooks. We had a company called RB Digital um, that was acquired by Overdrive. So we no longer have a separate RB Digital audiobook collection or RB Digital magazine collection. Those um, items have moved into the Overdrive app. And for a lot of you who use OverDrive, you're probably familiar with it um, being described as Libby, the, the Libby app. And now it's one stop. And so that's pretty exciting because on our side, um, OverDrive provides better support and is easier to use. Then under learn, um, this is where you would find in the online courses, the link to the new creative bug which is the videos from artists and designers. And it could be anything from how to macrame. Um, I think there's some cooking, some canning on there. And what's really exciting is you get these top level um, instructional courses, but they also provide you all the templates and patterns and recipes. So it's not just a teaser, it's everything that you need in order to complete whatever craft they're working on. Um, the other big news in our world is just this week, um, lynda.com got upgraded to LinkedIn Learning for libraries. And uh, lynda.com has been owned by LinkedIn for some time. Um, but with this transition, what we gained from this is many more courses, I think double the amount of courses, but also additional languages. Um, I don't know the list right off the top of my head, but it was quite long. Uh, now you can get courses in Japanese and Spanish. And so that's really exciting for our community as well. And also under learn, there's language learning. Uh, so once we get to travel again, <laughs> Mango Languages is always popular because it makes learning another language really fun. 
but we have a lot of people in our community who are new Canadians. So we do a lot of support in terms of providing resources to learn English. And one of our um, biggest used databases right now is called Road to IELTS, and it's to study for the IELTS exam. Um, there's the traditional database, databases I was mentioning. So it would be worthwhile to poke through here just to see if there's anything that matches up with your particular interest. And then one thing we didn't talk about is, did you know that there is a database built by librarians that will spit out, if you like this book, you're also going to like all these other books. So when we give reading recommendations, it's not that we've memorized or read everything, we use our tools. So this is our big tool that we use. Um, so that is the online resources. We also Nadine, have, yeah. sorry to interrupt. Um, one of our one of our attendees has asked if we could um, go go into Press Reader. Um, she says she's had some issues navigating it. So would you mind no diving in? Yeah, let's go to download newspapers, Press Reader. Now, did it follow me, or do I have to reshare? Oh, no, it followed you're good. me. You're good. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, let's see how strong my internet is. <laughs> Always exciting. <laughs> <laughs> whirling and whirling. One thing I can say about tech stuff is that it is really dependent on your personal setup. And so like on my laptop, it might behave a little bit differently. So if you want to bring your device into the library, this is where the front desk could really help you and even calling over the phone. And you can describe what you're seeing and we can double check it on our end because sadly, there's something about press reader today. It's not loading. Oh, here we go. I'm at home, so it didn't automatically sign me in. Um, but when you're in the library, it knows you're at the library, so it doesn't require you to, to sign in. But let's see if I, oh, there we go. And Jeanette, can I get a bit more information of what, what the trouble is? Hmm. Well, if this person would like to weigh in any more, provide any more um, info, were you, they said issues navigating, are you using um, are you using it in your browser, I assume? The, please, please feel free to let us know. <laughs> one of the more popular, it is Globe and Mail, isn't it? Globe mm -hmm. and Mail. We can no longer get this delivered in print to the Sea to Sky. So Globe and Mail is very popular on Press Reader. Um, I do believe because they have some restrictions as the publisher, that you might have to pop to the library every once in a while to um, be on our Wi-Fi so that they'll continue to give you access. Um, but this is how I navigate around. Um, read now. And I think it is very different if you were on your phone. Um, our friend has said not all periodicals seem to be available. Oh, OK. Um, so periodicals that they're interested in might not be part of the press reader um, suite. Uh, so that's where if you want to contact us and we can dig into exactly what the issue is. Um, and maybe maybe it's more so the most current issue is missing. Um, but once we have more details, we can dig into what the trouble was. All right, well, I'm going to close press reader. And services is the next page that I was gonna talk about. And that just highlights like the how-to questions, like how do I get a library card? How long can I borrow the books? Um, once we have the information about the seed library, that will be up here. Um, NELS is under our accessibility section. So if you are looking for an answer to a question, that's a good place to start. And then next up is all about events. So that's really Jeanette, unless there's more questions for me. Well, I'm happy to hop in now. And of course, folks, you can submit questions whenever you want, and we will have time at the end um, for questions as well. Um, Nadine, would you like to end your share and then I will share on my end? Mm -hmm. 
And I'll make sure that you can actually see what I want you to see. Do you see the website? <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great, wonderful, glad. Okay, so um, before I dive into the event calendar, I did want to talk a little bit about um, a couple of the resources that Nadine mentioned, because, you know, one of the really fun parts of my job is that programming is a reflection of our collection. And so what I mean, what does that really mean? To me, what that means is that typically, like in, in theory, any book that we have in our collection, the topic of that book could also be reflected in a program. Um, obviously, we can't offer as many programs as we do books. <laughs> I'm only one woman. But, um, you know, this is a way for us to kind of think about how broad our programming can be. And, um, and I know that some of you have been coming to virtual programs for the last year and thank you for doing that. Thank you for continuing to support us. And I think the really fun thing has been that most of our programs have transitioned pretty well onto the virtual realm, um, which was a big surprise, a, a really happy surprise for me. Um, a couple of things that were a trickier, let's say, <laughs> um, have been things like our tech series. And, you know, because of the really hands on nature of those classes, um, it's it's just been very challenging to, to try to replicate those virtually. Um, I know some of you have attended those classes and you know that like, you know, our wonderful facilitator, Kendra, we, you know, we keep our classes small, she can help each and every person. And that is just very, very tricky when you're not in the same room as somebody. But um, that's what makes me really excited that we have really powerful resources like um, like previously lynda.com, now LinkedIn Learning. And I was actually um, just going to log us in so you can see the interface. Um, you, are you seeing? You're seeing my... Yeah, okay, cool. So um, this is what LinkedIn Learning looks like once you're actually in. Um, you can click get started. Now, you don't have to have your library card memorized. I'm just one of those weird people who does. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna type that in. Uh, and then um, if you haven't used our online resources in a while, or maybe you've never used them, we automatically set your PIN as the last four digits of your phone number that you use to register. So that is always a good place to start if you're trying to guess your PIN. If not, just shoot us an email or call us and we can reset it for you. So here we go. We're going in to LinkedIn Learning. And I have to say that this is a resource that I have personally made a lot of use of um, in my personal life, but also in my um, professional life. So you can see my in progress classes here. I am, you know, I have been learning. I've been dabbling in playing the ukulele. <laughs> that's that's a personal endeavor. Um, but also, I no joke, I have used LinkedIn, well, lynda.com, now LinkedIn Learning, to inform a lot of my work. You know, I, um, I m more recently in the last couple of years, I've started to do more marketing for the library and I completely learned how to use Photoshop on LinkedIn Learning. I didn't, I didn't know a thing about it. Um, and so I, yeah, I completely learned that platform using LinkedIn Learning. And um, so that was really awesome. And I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you can use the use the drop down, uh, use the search bar, and you know I, for example, I might type in photo editing with, and see it says Lightroom, Photoshop. I don't have Lightroom, so I would go for Photoshop, and um, it shows you everything. But you can sort on the left side, and so I, you know, generally. I'll click beginner because you know I'm probably a beginner on these topics um, so that will sort it down to still 253 videos for a beginner level um, you can see courses versus individual videos courses are just made up of multiple videos and they probably cover multiple topics um, but I like the completeness of a course so maybe I'll click course um, and then there's even more time to complete I mean 
<laughs> some of the courses are very long, so you do need to give yourself time. Um, and yeah, there's there's just lots of ways to sort. Um, you can sort by software. Um, you can sort by subjects. Um, so it's it's a pretty powerful tool, and I have to say it's been invaluable to me for doing my job basically. <laughs> so that's been pre pretty amazing. Um, so that's LinkedIn learning. And I, I know I will say I'll be the first to say that learning in a classroom can be a lot more fun um, than learning by yourself at home. <laughs> but this is a good alternative. Um, I find that most of the teachers are quite I don't know, charismatic. They're they're you know, you can't talk to them, but you enjoy listening to them. Let's put it that way. So anyways, uh, this is just my personal plug for LinkedIn Learning. If While we can't do in-person tech classes, there's a lot to learn from this. And it doesn't have to be Photoshop. It, it can literally be um, intro to Excel. And you'll see the same the same sort of variety. And you can put in beginner, intermediate, advanced. Um, so it can be from the most simple concept to the most com complicated. There's kind of something for everybody in here. Um, oh, there goes my cat. <laughs> um, so that's just my, that's my plug for LinkedIn learning. And I do want to say also, uh, I want to plug creative bug as well, because um, I'm a knitter, I knit this sweater. It's, you know, my pride and joy. Um, but I have to say every time I start a new project, I learn something new. And that's probably just me being a bit of a masochist and doing harder and harder things. But um, I have to say, um, I have used Creative Bug to learn some new knitting techniques. And um, so I'm already logged in here, um, but you can, if you're me, you can type in knitting and get the full effect of what they have to offer. So this has actually helped me recently reading knitting patterns and charts. Um, that has been very helpful to me. Um, one thing that I'm really interested in as a very challenging topic is double knitting, um, which is this like wild, <laughs> it, you basically knit like a two ply garment. It's, it's like witchcraft as far as I'm concerned, but you get the full tutorial and you get a pattern to make that cowl for, for free. Um, and you can see that this is rated advanced. <laughs> so, you know, you can tell this is, this is no joke. Anyway, so that's, this is my personal plug for Creative Bug. And you can kind of see once we dig into it, how these resources reflect programs that we would possibly offer at some point. And it's a really great way to get, well, get the most out of your library. You know, if we can't host an in-person knitting class or a knitting group right now, you can get on Creative Bug and learn a lot. Okay, so so those Jeanette? are just, yeah. Sorry, I'm gonna interrupt. Um, I was just thinking about Mary's question about Press Reader a little oh, sure. bit more. Yeah. And I'm wondering, should we show them the niche tutorials? Um, because Ooh. we have added video tutorials for most of our resources, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. some just basic how-tos. Yeah. yeah. The other thing, and it's quite hard to see because uh, it's very small, but um, if Mary's looking for magazines, mm -hmm. um, Overdrive is where our RB Digital Magazines collection now lives, whereas Press Reader really was more about newspapers when mm -hmm. we purchased it. Um, it does have magazines in it, but if we're looking for a wider breadth, breadth mm -hmm. of magazines, that would be the place to go. Yeah. Uh, good, good point, Nadine. I will. So I, I'm not sure how big this, <laughs> this is yeah. on your screen, folks, but if you see under press reader here on my screen, there's this line that I've just circled <laughs> that says need help. And then there's a link that says press reader tutorial. So wherever you see that, you see it here under Libby and you'll see it here under consumer reports. Um, that will take you to a tutorial um, on a platform called Niche Academy um, that we love and we use for staff training as well. Um, and we have added those tutorials for all, not all, but almost all of our online resources. Um, so you can you can click through. I wonder if it'll. <laughs> my sharing might oh. not like me going off the website. Let's see. Oh, it leaves the green circles there. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I can clear those. 
clear all drawings. There we go. So this is now, um, we're now in Niche Academy instead of on our website, but this is the press reader um, tutorial that you can watch. Mm -hmm. So we, we won't dive into that. And what I love before you move on is that it will break apart, like if you're doing this on a computer or if you're doing it on a mobile device, because they act completely differently. So you would just pick which of the videos you'd want to watch. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Thanks yeah, that's for... a great, great feature. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can. Okay, are we back on the, the library website? Okay. You never fully know. Okay, so um, we've talked about a bunch of great online resources. Let's dive into the events calendar. And once again, I'll remind you that um, you're welcome to ask a question at any time. Um, I don't have the greatest view of the chat right now, but Nadine, if you see any chat questions pop up, please feel free to jump in. Um, oh, I can see it now. Oh, thank, thank you, Jillian. <laughs> we appreciate that. Okay, so um, diving into the event calendar, you can see um, if we go to our, well, any page on our website, you'll see the main um, menu along the top. And you can hover over events and see that we have four age categories for events, early years, kids, teens, and adults. So if you are, if well, you're all adults here. If you are an adult who is specifically interested in events for adults, I would dive right in and go to the adult panel because you're not going to have to be sifting through story times <laughs> um, if you're on this panel. This is all adult programming. And something, well, before we dive into our events, something that I'm really proud that we're, we've are we started doing um, is that we've started sharing external events in our event calendar. And that's something that Nadine and I started working on, I don't know, maybe six months ago, maybe something like that. Um, but basically, you now can see external events alongside our own events. And what just what that means is that we are not hosting those events, but we are endorsing them, so to speak. And um, so because they're in our calendar, you can guarantee that they will always be free events. Um, that's one of our criteria. Um, typically, they're also local events that now that could mean local to Sea to Sky, or maybe um, straying into Vancouver. Um, and of course, they're pretty much pretty much all virtual events still. Um, so you can see even um, today, we have an external event for the Clothesline Project, which is uh, the House Sound Women's Center. Um, they do an installation, an art installation every year. So that's going on. Um, you can see that actually today at 1.30, hey, there's a CRA Seniors Benefits and Credits presentation. This is perfect. Um, and so you can click into that and get the details, register and attend that. Um, there's also, oh, this is exciting, actually, because the North Shore Writers Festival starts or is happening this week. And so tonight, the event is Black British Columbian History in Three Literary Forms. Pretty cool. So, um, yeah, so I'm I'm really delighted by having all these external events in the calendar. They really um, diversify what we're sharing. And also, I mean, it's just it's a good news story for everyone. You know, we want people to be attending um, cool, free local events. So anyway, so that's just something if in case you've been wondering if you've been seeing external events in the in the calendar, that's what those are all about. Um, if you don't see the word external, then it means that it's being hosted by us. And so, of course, we can see Lunch and Learn here right now, getting the most out of your library. Here we are. Um, you can also see that later tonight, um, we're hosting an event called Capturing Sea to Sky COVID Stories. And it's a writing workshop where you will get the tools to record your unique COVID story um, for posterity, basically. Um, and this, I'm, I'm, I'll click into this event because I was really excited when the Whistler Pemberton Literacy Partnership approached us about this event, um, because really, even though, you know, we've all heard we're in this, we're in the same boat, or we're not in the same boat, but we're in the same storm, you know, there are lots of similarities about our experiences, but also everyone's experience has been totally unique. 
during this time. And so Jill Dawson, some of you might know Jill, she's a, an expressive arts facilitator. Um, she's going to be leading this, this workshop that will basically help people just start to record <laughs> using this motion, like you're just going to word vomit <laughs> your story, <laughs> but basically start to record your COVID story, good or bad, triumphant or not, um, in a totally judgment-free workshop setting. So, um, and we're also partnering with the Squamish Library and the Pemberton Library for that event. So um, anyways, if you're interested, it's tonight at six o'clock and you can email me if you want to come along. Um, I will say that that's also been a huge joy to me, um, partnering with the other libraries in the Sea to Sky. It's been so wonderful. Um, and really it's made so much sense when we're doing virtual programming to pool our resources and our efforts and bring our communities together. So that's been really wonderful. So hopping back over, I mean, I really, I, I know a lot of you come to library programs as well, so I might be preaching to the choir, but just to show you the diversity of events next week, I, it, I didn't plan this, I promise, but next week is a really jam packed week. So for example, um, Okay, so next week we have Photography for Beginners. It's not full. If you want to join us, you can. Um, for that's one of our classic, really well-loved programs. It's a two-part um, workshop where you learn how to use your the manual settings on your digital camera. So if you have a, a nice, you know, Canon or Nikon camera, but you always leave it on automatic, this workshop is for you. <laughs> it is um, so, the teacher is so great at easing you into the world of understanding your camera settings. So that's next week, Tuesday and Thursday. Um, what else have we got? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, we have a question saying, do you have much contact with the Bowen Island Library? I have to say I don't have any contact with them, but what about oh. you, Nadine? <laughs> well, I know the lovely Tina, who has been the director there for a very long time. Um, we do in terms of the larger group of libraries that work together. We do purchasing together, we do training together. Um, and But in terms of us doing partnership programs, that's an excellent idea mm -hmm. that we could extend down to Bowen Island and yes. even the Sunshine Coast. So thank Definitely. you for that. Yes, thank mm -hmm. you for that. And actually, now that you say that, um, now that you say that out loud, Nadine, the um, one of our local partners, the Whistler Welcome Center, they've been working a lot with the, li well, not libraries, but other welcome centers on the um, Sunshine Coast possibly Bowen Island, but they they have really expanded their reach as well for the same reasons, essentially, you know, to pool resources, to bring communities together. Um, so it, yeah, it's a pretty cool time actually to be collaborating with people who we wouldn't normally get to. Mm -hmm. um, Jeanette, there is yes. another question about, do we record our programs? Oh, I missed that one. Um, so that's a great question. And the the easiest way for me to, to to separate which ones we do and which ones we don't, if we have a workshop that has a limited number of spaces and you're learning hands on skills, we don't record. And basically, that's just so the people in the class get the you know intimate small group setting that we're trying to replicate from from the before times. So for example, photography for beginners will not be recorded. Um, something like our meditation classes, they're not recorded. That is also a big privacy thing because, you know, um, meditation classes can bring up, you know, private topics or sensitive topics, shall we say. Um, book club is another one that we don't record for basically the same reasons. But anything that's like a talk, um, like what we're doing today, um, quest lectures are recorded. Um, yeah, anything that's sort of like a lecture or a performance, those are recorded. And then um, you can usually find them on our Facebook page or our YouTube page, hopefully both. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's a great question. Oh, that person says they live half time in Bowen and half time at Whistler. That makes, that makes sense. <laughs> Um, is, are there any others that I've missed? No, okay. it was okay. one in the Q and A. Oh, wonderful. Oh yeah. I definitely can't see that. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Um, 
well, you know, I won't talk too much more. I'll just run through the rest of next week just because it really is a pretty awesome lineup. So, you know, Tuesday, Thursday, Photography for Beginners. Wednesday, we've got Cookbook Club, um, and the topic is Salads Galore. And so that's a program that our, our colleague Maz cooked up <laughs> um, because she genuinely loves cooking and loves trying different cookbooks and different recipes. So the idea of that club is just that you come prepared to share a cookbook on the theme of the night. So, um, and you can share multiple, you can, it basically, the only thing we care about is that you've actually tried recipes from it. Um, so anyway, so the, the April theme is salads galore. It's, it is salad season. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, the same night, we have our quest lecture, um, our April quest lecture, Mathematics Through Interesting Problems, the Konigsberg Bridge. Don't know if I said that right. Um, I really love the quest lecture series because it's we don't choose the topics. The, the professors come to us and it's so, it's so varied and it can be very niche. <laughs> and I just love it. Um, that's also in partnership with the other Sea to Sky libraries. Um, and then Friday, next Friday, we have our sec our virtual ukulele jam. So um, another one of our great colleagues, uh, Julie, has been um, piloting this virtual ukulele jam. It's exactly what it sounds like. You have your ukulele at home. We send you a songbook, and you play ukulele <laughs> over Zoom with Julie. <laughs> So um, this is only the second meeting, um, but I think the first one went really well. And then you can see on Sunday, we also have journaling with Jules. Um, so that's another program that Julie runs and it's so beloved. Like people, <laughs> people really love that program. Basically she does different writing prompts and journaling exercises every time. So it's for anybody, whether you've been journaling your whole life or you've never written a word. Um, she makes it really welcoming for everybody. Um, and I, yeah, I think that one's a, a real gem in our crown for sure. Um, and so if you have, if you're interested about any of those, you are welcome to email me and um, I can give you more information, sign you up. I will briefly say that, of course, um, you may have children or grandchildren or nieces and nephews or you know, godchildren that you may also want to um, bring, bring to a program. I say bring, it, they are all virtual at the moment. But of course, um, you can explore the other tabs on the um, event calendar. So if you go to early years, you will see all of our, um, you'll see parent infant drop in, Zoom story time, rhythm and rhyme time, um, classics for kids. Um, so you'll see lots of, you'll, you'll just see a whole different list. And of course, if you just click on events, it shows you everything not sorted by age. So you get a full picture of what we are offering. And I think because it's almost 1250, I will, um, I will end it there. Oh, I did. Okay. So Kathy sent us some questions ahead of time. And, uh, one of them was related to book club and, yes, we do have a virtual book club and it is on no joke. It is the highlight of my entire month. <laughs> um, I'm going to scroll down and open that up. So basically last year, we only missed one month of book club. We missed March because I didn't have my head wrapped around how to do it yet. But uh, ever since we have been going strong, it is the most fun. Um, we have had meetings with up to 30 people. Um, in attendance. So it's very popular. Um, but I make sure everybody gets a chance to weigh in. And so it's actually the same um, timing as um, as it was before the pandemic. So it's the last Wednesday of every month at 7pm Pacific. And um, we announce the books ahead of time. So if you you can see here that this month we're reading Anxious People. Uh, if you weren't a fan of Anxious People or you don't have a chance to read it, you can always go ahead and see what we're reading next. So you can see at the bottom of the page here that in May we're reading Chop Suey Nation by Anne Hui. And then in June we're discussing Johnny Appleseed by Joshua Whitehead. So um, you can register for one meeting and never come again or you can come every single month. Um, it's very, it's open to all. And um, it's, 
it's really fun. I don't want to toot my own horn, but we have a great time. <laughs> and, um, and it's been a real success. I'd say it's one of our biggest successes in terms of our virtual programs, including, I mean, people, people want it to stay virtual after uh, the pandemic is over, because I think they love joining from their couch with their wine and their PJs on, honestly, like, <laughs> It's uh, pretty simple. It's pretty easy to understand. So um, yeah, so that's that's book club. So yes, Kathy, we are doing virtual book club. And the other question Kathy asked was about um, writing consults. Um, and I'm actually going to use the, the search feature here um, because our April session has already passed. But if I type in writing here in the event name filter, I think, yeah, here we go. Here's the May one. So um, yes, we are still offering the SFU Writers Consults with Stella Harvey. This is kind of a hidden gem. I would say that not a lot of people know about this, but it's such an amazing program because Stella Harvey, who most of you have probably met or know through the Writers Festival, um, she's an alumna of this writing program at SFU. And so she's now a mentor for this program. And basically you can sign up and submit writing to her. I think it's up to seven, seven up to seven pages. <laughs> Very specific. Um, you can submit up to seven pages of writing to her ahead of time, and then she'll meet with you and talk through it. And people love these sessions with Stella. It's I'm well, it's Stella. She's just a, so wonderful. Um, but it doesn't have to be fiction. It, it can be nonfiction writing. Um, if you're if you're working on your memoir, you could talk to her. Um, even even honestly, like writing a cover letter for something, she would be game to help you with that. Um, she is open. She's basically open to any type of writing, and she's just such a wealth of knowledge. Um, and actually, this program has gotten a little bit more flexible with being virtual because she doesn't need to use our community room. So in fact, we say that it's the first Thursday of each month, but actually Stella will just contact you and set up a time that works for both of you. So it's very flexible. Um, yeah, so that program is happening as well. Now, I think we might pause after May. Um, so if you're hearing this and you're interested, contact me now, because we could still get you in for April or we could get you in for May. Okay, so. Um, I should stop talking. <laughs> so, so Kathy had a couple of other questions mm -hmm. and one was about book donations. Mm -hmm. um, currently we're unable to accept book donations mostly because of the volume. We completely understand that everyone did a lot of spring cleaning during their times at home. And um, unfortunately we just can't manage that. So we have been making referrals um, to other organizations the hot spot in Squamish is the latest one that has started to take donations. And that is an organization that's very like-minded to the library. Um, they support literacy in their community. They're about technology training. So that's a great spot um, to donate to. There are also places in the city. I think it's that independent bookstore that's been getting a lot of press during the pandemic. They're accepting donations, um, but you can be the first to know. And I'm gonna let Jeanette pipe in because I think she has the factual details to this. I, I do. <laughs> and, and I will say the bookstore that Nadine mentioned is called Book Lovers Used Bookstore and it's on Lonsdale in North Van. So they are accepting donations. But the really exciting news is that the Friends of the Library will be hosting a spring book sale. And um, it's going to be virtual, so it's definitely going to be different than than before. Um, but starting um, on Monday, April 26th, they will be collecting book donations. And we Whistler Public Library will be the only donation spot this year. So you won't see the collection boxes like at Nestor's or anything like that. You'll only see it at the library. Um, and I will say they're also um, only looking for certain types of books books this year. So they are looking for adult fiction, so novels. They're looking for biographies, memoirs, and cookbooks. Those are the adult books they're looking for. And then any children's or teens books. And so 
um, starting on April 26th, they are going to be taking those books. Um, you can drop them off at the library. Um, the details about the actual sale are coming soon. Um, I believe that it will start, I mean, this is the thing, it doesn't have to be a one day event. Um, so I think it'll start the following week, um, the week of May 3rd, but it won't just be one day, you will be able to access the sale for multiple days. So, but the details should be on our website soon. I'm just waiting for them to send me the, the link so mm -hmm. I can share it places. Yeah. And K Kathy had a great follow-up question to that, which was, do we have a list of community little free libraries that people could be connected with? And we don't, but we could throw that up on our Facebook page and see if there's anybody who wants to share the location of their little free library because that, that would be great too. Um, and when we can, we will bring back the free cart, but that just isn't a service that we're offering right now. Um, the other one was about community room rentals. And that is where our pop-up computer lab is right now. So we aren't offering any rentals and we also have to be sensitive to the length of time that people are uh, staying in the building. Um, so for right now, it's just those 30 minute express browsing and the 60 minute computer use sessions. Does that cover all of your questions, Kathy? Yeah. How about anyone else? Anyone in the chat? Claire has Hi. to go. Thanks for being here, Claire. I'm glad you enjoyed. Let me know if you want to sign up for book club. <laughs> and we do have time. We have a few more minutes left if anybody else has questions. But of course, um, Nadine and I are also accessible. <laughs> so uh, you all already have my email address. So please feel free to ask any questions um, you might have. And likewise, I think Nadine is typing her email address in the chat now, um, nwhite at whistlerlibrary.ca. Oh, sorry, Nadine, that's only to the panelists. You need to switch um, to panelists and attendees. There you go. Thank you, Jeanette. She no is my problem. tech support today. <laughs> <laughs> so happy to help. Um, now I'm wondering, um, Kathy, do you want to jump in and tell us about May and we can just give everybody a few more minutes if they have questions? Um, Thanks, so very, thanks very much. I'm going to have Cheryl Lynn uh, oh. share with you in just a few minutes about our May 20th, Thursday, May 20th, noon to one session again with the Whistler Library. So thankful for these sessions on behalf of the Whistler Mature Action Community Group. Cheryl Lynn and I are on the board. We are volunteers and we invite you to join our group for free. If you're 55 plus living in our community here, senior, we are advocacy, the voice of 55 plus here. We are happy to help. You can send us an email through the website. And uh, I will now pass the baton over to Sherilyn to talk about the May 20th event. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Kathy. I'd, I'd like to say I really enjoyed this uh, session on the library resources. It was really enlightening. Um, so on Thursday, May 20th, our guest speaker will be Marianne Prevo. She's the head of fitness programming at Meadow Park Sports Center. And what we've asked her to do is to go through some exercises that will get us in shape for our summer, spring and summer recreational activities, exercises that you can do at home uh, with equipment you might have there, whether it's a broomstick or something like that. And uh, so anyway, we're looking forward to that. And if we hear any more details, we'll put that up on our website and uh, let you know what you need to have ready for those exercises. Thank you, Sherilyn. Yes, and as per usual, you can email me if you wanna come along to that. Um, Marianne is just an absolute delight. So it's, it's sure to be a great session. <laughs> Um, and wonderful. Okay, so that's our next session. Um, you know, uh, it, May 20th, be here in your workout gear. <laughs> um, it's going to be fun. And um, if there aren't any other questions, I'll, I'll give it another minute. Of course, we are recording this. Um, you're welcome to share the recording with friends who you think might be interested in learning more about the library. And um, you can always contact Nadine or myself if you have questions. I think that's about it for the day, if there are no other questions from our audience. Speak now. <laughs>
Okay, great. Well, it's 12.59, so we're right on the money here. Um, thank you again to Kathy and Sherilyn for partnering on this series. Thank you to Nadine for joining us today. Always a pleasure to, we don't get to work together all that much these days. So this is a real treat for us. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think that's where we'll leave it.